Hello everyone, and welcome to chapter 3 of Introducing Python. In this chapter, we'll be talking about collections. Python has many ways to organize collections of data. Uh, they range from uh, very simple ways to very complex ways that extend into uh, databases and other sort of uh, interesting data structures. Uh, often we look at different kinds of collections in order to find the best way to manage data or take it in from one source, store it some convenient way, and send it out to somewhere else. Regardless of the many interesting, sort of more extended ways in which we can manage data, Python has three key ways which are worth introducing and getting really good at because a lot of the other ways of collecting data tend to lean on these or involve some sort of uh, conversion between these kinds of data sets and other kinds of data. This is especially the case when doing work with pandas or numpy, which uh, are slightly more advanced, but are ways in which we, we manage tabular data, which is really common within the social sciences. Before we get to those, however, uh, which is kind of outside of introducing Python, uh, we'll uh, first look at uh, these right here in this book, uh, which is the list, the set, and the dictionary. Now the logic of these is slightly different for each one of them, uh, but they do cover a really useful and broad set of applications. The thing that matters the most, or is the most distinctive between these, is how they associate data. So each type of collection may associate data in different ways. Now, when I say associate data, I mean in a way, uh, we could also say the way they order data, but the matter is, is that the ordering comes in many ways from the association. In a list, uh, data is ordered by position, and so we associate data by looking for its position index. By contrast, a set does not really have a notion of position. Data there is associated by considered in, by inclusion, so it's either in the set or it's not in the set. Uh, third, a dictionary uh, is ordered by key. Now, keys work a lot like sets. You can only have one key, uh, one unique key in each dictionary. So you can have many keys, but each one of them has to be unique. And that uh, they associate with data downstream. So a, uh, a dictionary might have a word and then have a definition of that word. Similarly, a dictionary in Python will have a key and then it will have some sort of value. Now, the value in a dictionary could be any object, uh, as we can see, but the key has to have a um, the key has a constrained set of uh, possible objects. Although that expands as we get through versions of Python, but generally speaking, we're going to think of a key as something like a string or a number that we could use, and then when we ask for that number from the dictionary, we'll get some value back. Now, virtually all collections in Python are iterable, and that means that you can iterate through them. You can start from the, f the beginning, ask for one, then ask for the next item, and keep going through until you get the end of the items. That being said, the order in which you get the items back may vary depending on your version of Python and the type of object. In general, only the list is the one that we will guarantee will come back in kind of the order that you put it in, but uh, dictionaries and sets, if you ask for items from them, you can keep getting items until you're finished. Now, that being said, those issues with ordering and iteration are covered more fully in the next chapter, uh, which will be on for loops and while loops and other ways of working through a collection. Here, we're just going to introduce the collections and see some of the ways in which you can do some simple operations like getting things into them and getting things out of them. The first one as we can see here, is the list. So that's order by position. We'll cover that, then the set, and then the dictionary. So lists are a collection of objects, and they, like most British buildings, start at zero. So uh, coming from Canada, I was a bit surprised when I would uh, first in, uh, enter buildings in the UK, and uh, there was a notion of a ground floor, which is different from the first floor. Uh, now that also is worth considering for those of us that have come from other programming languages, such as R where R has, uh, starts its uh, indexes at 1, whereas Python starts its indexes at 0. So the first element you add to any collection in Python will be the zeroth element. To that end, when I talk about the first element, I'm going to talk about the element in position 1, and the zero element, or the initial element, as the, the, the primary element <laughs> in, the, uh, in any collection. So here we have a, a notion of a list, uh, and I called it list example. Uh, maybe I could have called it example list, as I do tend to want to put the uh, the type at the end, but we'll go with this for now. See list example equals apples, apples, 
bananas, cucumbers, and durians. Durian's a bit more obscure as a fruit, and uh, it's not a taste for everyone, but it's worth considering here, not the least of which is because, as you'll see, they all go A, B, C, D. And so we can print that example, and you'll notice that a list, like most objects in Python, has a way of representing itself as a string. And so when it represents itself as a string, it comes down looking like this. This is one text object. Now, if we want to return a single element of that list, we can count its position and use that as an index. So as I mentioned, uh, the zeroth example is uh, uh, apples, and the first will be bananas. Now, we've spoiled the surprise here because this is uh, already ran, but it's a good reminder then uh, for me to do this and to remind you as well that what we ought to do when we start is restart the kernel and clear all outputs. So I'm going to do that. I'm only just past the first uh, first line, so we're going to rerun this. So we have list example available within memory. And now we'll look down below and print list example one, and it'll be bananas, not apples. Now we can count backwards through the list using negative numbers like so. So you'll see first I'll print example minus one, and then minus two. Uh, minus one should be the last item, minus two should be the second last item, and so forth and so forth. In order to, to determine the length of a collection, we generally use the len function. Now, len will uh, uh, return something for just about anything that you can iterate, and of course, lists are no exclusion. So here we have list length, which is the len of list examples. It's just a variable, it's in black, it's not a special thing. But len is special. Uh, as you can see, it's written in green, and it's a function, because you add the object inside, and you know, out comes some data. So you'll see I've printed down here the list has list length elements. You may also notice here that I didn't use, as I often do, an F insertion. Uh, instead, I used commas. The one thing I want to flag up with commas is that what it does generally, uh, by default, is add a space in between the string and the next thing after the comma. So right here we have list has four elements. Whereas if I was to use an F insertion, if I did that here, and to recall, uh, we make that uh, in parentheses. And you'll see that, that it doesn't have a space, so that would be a bit constrained, and we would have to uh, move that forward. But just a little bit of information there to help you think about how we actually represent the data with, uh, with strings, which is generally useful rather than just printing list length equals list example, and then just printing four. So now you'll notice here, the list has four elements, but if we try to index at, at four, it's going to give us uh, an error. And it says an index error here, because the list is out of range. And that's because even though there's four elements, the elements are zero, one, two, and three. Uh, and so thus, uh, if we go down below and do uh, list example, list length minus one, that's going to take the list length, which is four, take one away from it, and give us a last uh, element in the list. And it works just fine. It's pretty common within Python to not just look for a single element of a list, but to look for uh, multiple elements of a list in turn. Now that might be um, elements excluding, say, the last element, excluding the first, some chunk within between. And the way we do all of these things is through what's called slicing. Now inside of the square brackets that denote a list, we can use a colon in order to denote our slices. So down here we have the list example again, uh, but now we have print, and then we have some slices here. So we go from 0 to 2, and then from 2 to the end. And you'll notice I actually can do this uh, because it knows to start from the beginning, uh, and it knows to end at the end with these colons here. Before illustration, uh, I will put 0 and 4. So the first one, it printed the first two elements, and the last one printed the second two elements. Now, if you know above, recall that we said list example four, and it gave an error. So why did it work down here? Now, the reason it worked down here is because it goes up to, but not including, the element at after the colon. And that's that way uh, we can have um, contiguous slices of a list. So 0 to 2 and 2 to 4 won't have like bananas or cucumbers as, as overlapping. We'll go right up to, but not including, element at index 2. And then from element at index 2, right up to, but not including 4. And so that way, we don't get an index error because we're not pulling for the index 4 because it doesn't exist. But similarly, uh, as I noted, it is convention that 
if we just want to go to the end or start from the beginning, we can exclude those numbers and then just have them as colon two, just go up to but not including the second, and this right here, from two, up to but not including uh, the, the end. Or go finish right to the end. And so this is uh, sort of framed right here. And one way to note about this that's really handy is that we can also do this with negative numbers. Remember, negative numbers count from the, from the end. So we're going to up to, but not including, the last element. So this, as I say here, this happy fellow, uh, this right here is a way of saying up to, but not including the last element, which is often pretty common as a, uh, as a pattern that we can search for. And down below, you'll see I have in comments some others here, just to show off uh, the first one right here, that's starting from the first, but up to the second last, so it should just be uh, bananas and cucumbers. Well, I'm gonna rerun that again now with the last one. And what happens if we just put the colon in there, but nothing else? You might suspect by inference that uh, it starts at the beginning and ends at the end, so this should print everything in our list. And sure enough, it did. Now, to add data to a list, there is a, a number of ways to do this, both for adding data to any given list or adding two lists together. Uh, I'll review these here, but I do encourage you to kind of revisit this, uh, toy with it yourself, and get a sense for this. The most important part is to remember that this is a capacity that you can do, and then to look up the specific command for it until you get acquainted with the actual syntax itself. So, we can add things to a list using list.append, uh, and then we can extend a list with items from any iterable collection. So now you may recall I said above that uh, something like a set or a dictionary is iterable, uh, and so you can extend a list with these things. But what comes down afterwards uh, may vary depending on the kind of collection, but the point is you can kind of attach other things to a collection, and we'll see those in practice below. You can also remove things from a list. Uh, you can remove it with clear. That will uh, keep the name but empty the list out. You can remove um, one item by index. So you can pop a value of the index. By default, it's the, the last item. So if you have a, if you just go list.pop, or whatever the name of your list is, uh, .pop, or list.pop4, and that's the same as doing a delete uh, before the list. Now, delete is interesting. It's one of the few commands in Python that works like a function, but doesn't have parentheses around it. So we don't see del parentheses, we just say del list4. Finally, you can remove an item by its value as well as by its index. So let's say we have a value in there for cucumbers or bananas. We will remove the first instance of that value with list.remove. It'll go search for that value and then just get rid of it. Now remember, a list is indexed by position, so that means everything else is going to sort of scoot on forward and they're going to have a new index position if you start removing things from the middle of the list. And then finally, it's worth considering that you can sort the list. And that will sort it, and I say here, in place, because what that means is that what this does is it does not return a new list sorted with the old items. It just sorts the list itself. So let's watch these uh, in practice. Now, you'll see up here, before we actually get into the details of a list, I've got some example code here. And uh, this is to help us differentiate between those times when something returns something uh, from a function or a method, and the times when it uh, changes something in place. So here we have some uh, text. Now, we know that a string is like a list, but of characters only. Uh, and then it has methods. Methods mean something that you apply to the, um, uh, to the object itself, whereas a function is something that takes the method for input. Uh, and to refresh that, if we go up here, right up to len, we'll see here that len is a function. It takes the object as its input and then returns something from it. Whereas down here, these things like uh, uh, upper, in this case, is a method. It is applied um, to the object itself. So we say x dot upper rather than using x as input into the statement. We'll see functions and methods kind of interchangeably throughout the, uh, the text, but it's a good way to distinguish. So first, let's have a look. What we see there, we print x dot upper. Now, if I go down right here, and I print x or ll, and then I print ll dot sort, it's going to print none. And that's because 
sort change the method or change the object in place. Uh, and so what we would really need to do is go, if we see up here, that's LL, and then go LL.sort, and then print the newly sorted object, like so. And we'll see that again down below as I provide examples for these things. Now here we are, extending a list, and it returns none. So just watch what happens there. Extending a list, print the old, freshly extended list. So you see up here, it, it printed none, because what happens was is that the extend works in place. Now in this case, once again, I did it, I extended the list, but then I printed the list itself, and it worked just fine. See here, the second time around, one, two, four, nine, four, five, six. And I use these numbers, you know, sort of deliberately to remind that a list doesn't have to have unique elements in it. Here we have a one, then a four, a nine, then another four. And they all come in in the position that we add them to the list. Now in this case, we had two lists. So extending was taking the elements of the second list and putting them in the first one. We're extending the first one with elements of the second. In this case, we're appending a new element to the old one. In this case, what we would not do is put that in 70, because then we'll actually, well, we'll see what happens when I uh, demonstrate it here. But this is now just a, a new value, so it should go 1, 4, 9, and then 70. And we can see. Now, interestingly, uh, collections in object, or collections in Python, are not strict in terms of the kinds of objects that you can place in them. You can, in fact, place any sort of object within a list or a collection, seemingly. Uh, and then make use of it as such. So, if we make new value here, its own list, what do you think is going to happen? We could try it out. And we can see here we have a little, little tiny list with just one element in it inside of our old list. Uh, it gets a little uh, stranger than that. So, for example, what if you were to append, uh, uh, what if you were to append a list to itself? And you can see here it does it, but it has this like little ellipsis here to show that it's recursive because it means that the new the new list is going to be in the old list is in the old list and so forth. You really would want to avoid code that looks like so forth, uh, but it is worth illustrating how flexible Python can be. And so once again, showing the uh, the extended list, and then finally uh, clearing the list. And again, these are all methods that apply in place. So by popping, once again, uh, we're going to pop the value that's in position 1. We're not going to pop the number 1. So watch how it shows when we've uh, uh, changed these values. So first it's going to print the original list, and then the popped one, and then the popped value. So you'll see because we popped an index 1, we're left with a 1 and a 9, and the popped value is a 4, so that came out of the list. Uh, now, as I remarked, uh, if you do it by default, it'll just pop the last item in the list, so it should be 9 now, and we should have a, a smaller list with 1 and 4 in it, and that's what's happened here. Uh, deleting, again, the same sort of thing, but it's the only one, seemingly, that has no parentheses in Python, uh, and so you'll see how we've deleted the last two elements of here. In fact, we was kind of clever here and used a bit of, bit of slicing to say, uh, go to from the back, minus 2, and then the rest of them. Just take the rest of them and delete it. And so that's what happened here. We went two from the back, deleted the rest. Similarly, remove, if you recall, works by value. So we have a value called 20, and it's not going to look for the index of 20. It's going to look for the value of 20 and remove that. And then finally, re reinforcing the sorting that we saw above. Now, I did mention that we were just showing uh, three kinds of collections here, a list, a set, and a dictionary. But in fact, here's a bonus one, and it's called a tuple or a tuple. Now, you'll notice sometimes that we have uh, collections of things in uh, square brackets and sometimes in uh, parentheses, or the more curved brackets. And they generally work uh, the same with one proviso, and that is uh, a tuple. Once you initialize it, that's immutable. You can't add to a tuple, you can't change it, uh, you can only create it or destroy it. Uh, there are times when that's common or useful, as you'll you'll see later on as you encounter in the code, but the important thing now is to suggest that they work pretty much the same, except for the fact that you, can, uh, you can't edit them. So here we have xy tup down here, and I got minus 1 and 3 in there, and then 
check out what I've done here. I've got x comma y equals x y top. Now we'll make use of this later on, but what it's suggesting is that we're going to assign x to the first value and y to the second value. So let's see here. Indeed, printing x y top, it prints the tuple, and then we can print the first element and then the last element. The uses for this will become a little clearer when we see dictionaries down below, but especially uh, in the next chapter on iteration, where we're going to want to iterate through stuff, and then the stuff that we iterate, uh, each time around it could return not one value, but two values, and we might assign one to x and one to y, or whatever we name them, i and j, or maybe row and column, and, and so forth. The second way to add elements to a collection is to use a set. Uh, and a set, as we remarked earlier, contains only unique values. So imagine we have a list. Call in, uh, here we have uh, Spain, France, Spain, Italy, Italy. Now, these are countries in Europe, and they're, uh, maybe they are particular um, elements in some sort of measurement. It could be people, it could be uh, values, or I don't know, football clubs. Uh, but in this case, we have duplicates. And let's say we want to find out just the unique values within this set, or sorry, within this list. Well, we can turn it to a set, and it's as simple as recasting. So we take the uh, the value or the collection we had before, in this case ex1, and then we can just turn it into a set by saying set. And then it will spit out the following, which is Spain, France, and Italy. Now, for what it's worth, it might spit it out, or might return it saying uh, France, Spain, Italy. In a set, the order doesn't matter, and you cannot guarantee that the things that you return will show up in the order that you added them in the set. That's a matter of the way in which sets are stored within the computer uh, using um, memory hashing, which means that it just finds an address in the computer, the next address, and, and adds it for something. But the way it returns it um, is not guaranteed because of the way it ma manages that memory. So now let's have a look here at how we might create a set from scratch, add some things to it. So you'll see here, S1 set, S1 add cherry, then lemon, then I'm going to print S1, then I'm going to add cherry again, and it really shouldn't make a difference, should it? And indeed, look at that, it doesn't. But also look that we added cherry and lemon, but it came down as lemon and cherry. So once again, reminding that the order is not guaranteed. Now here we have a list with a bunch of numbers. We have a one, a two, three, a whole bunch of fives. Uh, and so as a list, it should have all of those values, but as a set, it should just have one, two, three, four, five, and six in any order. Oh, and, and delightfully this time it's in, the, uh, uh, in that order. Now with a set, we can do uh, a lot of things. Uh, some of those are actually mentioned in more depth in my uh, chapter chapter five of uh, From Social Science to Data Science, where I look at merging and how uh, we can do things like unions and uh, uh, intersections, set, set subtractions, and then link that to how we merge data. But for here, let's have a look at some simple uh, matters. Lemon in S1, that should be true um, because our S1 here had lemon and cherry whereas pineapple in S1 should be false. And indeed, there it is. Now, of course, you can do that in a variety of ways. You can uh, just have those in a list and then iterate through the list, checking each element to see if it is a lemon. Um, and then if there's one that's a lemon, you return it and so forth. But it's, uh, it's not particularly uh, effective or efficient. Now, you'll notice I've uh, demonstrated that down here using what's called the time it command. Now, in this case, what time it does, and this is a Jupyter specific thing, is it will run this particular comparison, uh, in this case, 10,000 times. And it will run this one 10,000 times. So we'll get a, uh, an estimate for how fast it is to query this list versus how fast it is to query this set. Now, 10,000 loops is pretty pretty brisk on my computer, but just let's have a look here. Uh, for, the, uh, for the list, one is the first element in a list, so it only has to check the first time and not go through the rest of them. So it's about as fast as you can get with a list, and that's about 40 nanoseconds on my, uh, on my computer. Now, in order to get to the last element of the list, you've got to iterate through all of them to check for that, and so that's actually a bit slower looking for the last item. By contrast, when we go down to a set, 
if we uh, if we convert this to a set, it should still it just has nine numbers in it. But indeed, it's about four times faster looking for the first item, and I guess 144. This would be 14 times faster uh, looking for the uh, for the last item. So when you want to check the inclusion of something in a set or in a collection of things, uh, converting it to a set can be uh, really fast and make some really big differences, especially if you're like, say, reading text, looking for whether the text has a word. Um, being able to tokenize that text into a, a series of words as a set and then going, is it in there, can make a big difference when doing a lot of work. And here I covered the details with the, uh, the timeit command. Now, you may have seen a Venn diagram at some point in your life which has two sets of things and then something that overlaps, and they can be both uh, humorous or really, uh, really illustrative. Uh, you could do that with, uh, on Venn diagrams, you'll sometimes see that with, uh, you know, with three circles, and like, so what's the thing in the middle of all three? Now, for our work, uh, we're going to just look at two sets at a time, and we can think of the stuff that is either inside of both of them, inside of either of them, or just inside one and not the other. And so that corresponds here to the union, which is look for all elements from both sets, from either set, we might say. Intersection looks for all the elements in common. What are the things that are in both set one and set two? And then here we have set one minus set two. Uh, this removes all the elements from set one that were in set two. If there were additional elements in set one, they're not con or in set two, they're not considered. So let's say we have, uh, as we'll, we'll see that down below, uh, but you can have more items in set two than were in set one, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna throw an error or anything because they're not in set one. It'll just take the ones out of set one that were included. So I'm using um, first the, the first five numbers, set count, and then we have set odd here. So it's the first five odd numbers. And you can see we have some in common, one, three and five are in common, and then this one has seven, nine, this one has two, four, uh, and so we should be able to see some differences with our, uh, within our example. So we're just gonna print them, then print the union, then print the intersection, and then we'll look at some set subtraction uh, before moving on. Okay, so the union, all the elements from both, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. So that indeed is, is all of them there, is the union. The intersection, one, three, and five, those are the elements that they had in common. And set subtraction, set count minus set odd is two, three, and four. So it was, these are the ones in common. So if we subtract them from set count, then we're left with two and four. Now the fact that seven and nine were not in set one doesn't, or set count, uh, doesn't make a difference. And vice versa right here. The fact that two and four were not in uh, set odd doesn't make a difference for the subtraction. If you want to add new elements to a set, you can uh, do this, for example, using update. So look how look how here we have, uh, say, four um, looks like uh, flavors of a cola, uh, and then we have a, uh, a, a a new flavor a new flavor list. It's going to have orange, pineapple, and sarsaparilla. Uh, so if we update, we're what we're doing here is we're going to take these from uh, this list and update our set. Now we didn't use the word extend here, and the reason is is because it's not going to extend it, it's not going to go at the end, and it's not going to guarantee that all of them are going to be in there, because as you'll notice, the new flavor list has orange as well. So in this case, it's not going to have cherry, lemon, orange, grape, orange. It's going to have these four and these two when we uh, see the new set. Now from the set, that's where we start to get the dictionary. And the dictionary is like a set, but each of the uh, each of the elements in a set are considered as keys, and then when you ask for, you know, not just is the key in the dictionary, but then when I give you the key, then you'll give me the uh, the value that's back. So in this case, in Python, we might have a dictionary. Uh, we have breakfast and then porridge. And so instead of calling breakfast one element of a set, we call it a key, and then porridge is the value. Now, of course, it could be a list. These might be the options that one has for breakfast, such as eggs, toast, and porridge. In fact, it could be in another dictionary. So we might see here, here's an example of a dictionary nested within a dictionary. So the we might think of this perhaps as like a, a menu order. Uh, the person ordered for breakfast, uh, eggs, bread, and porridge, 
But the it's in a dictionary itself because it's not just that they ordered eggs. They ordered two eggs. They ordered their bread toasted, and they ordered classic porridge. Uh, so you can see how by nesting different dictionaries and dictionaries, these things can get quite complicated, but also can handle a variety of different circumstances to model data in the real world. So you can see below how I've created a, uh, an example dictionary, and we've called it Food Dict, and we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner as the keys, and then porridge, pizza, and stir fry as the values. So now you'll notice here that I'm using these square brackets again, but this isn't a list. When we create items, uh, we use the different kinds of parentheses to denote the different kinds of collections. So we see here this dictionary. It has these curly braces to create the dictionary. Um, however, when we index the dictionary, we use these square brackets because they're what's referred to as an indexer. Now, the list has an indexer, and up here you almost didn't even notice the difference because the list started with a square, and then we indexed it with a square. So you can see here, delete list, and then we're indexing those. Uh, uh, and above here at the top, you can see we've indexed by slices and so forth. But uh, a dictionary also allows us to, uh, to index things as well. So that's what we're describing down right here. And we can see that uh, dictionaries have these indexers, as do, uh, as do lists. Now, a set wouldn't necessarily have an indexer uh, because what we're not doing is returning a value. We're just checking whether the value is in the set or not. But now let's have a look down here what happens uh, when, we, uh, when we have two elements with the same key. Now, it says here uh, breakfast equals fruit. But I also put in there breakfast equals porridge. So this is a way of illustrating how uh, we have to consider our data structure carefully. We can either have a dictionary per person, so uh, we could have one person's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or we could have a list of uh, potential choices as the values. We could do this and put, you know, make a list, and then make porridge, and then fruit, and so forth. In, the, uh, in this dictionary, it would really depend on the reasoning why we want to organize data in this way. As a small programming aside, you'll notice by now that not all Python commands need to be on the same line. There are a few places where you can naturally break a line and not confuse the Python interpreter. So uh, one of those is after a comma, and you'll see that a lot uh, later on. But wherever there's a comma, we can break the line and then continue to add elements. So here I could put lunch, uh, and then I could even put another one, uh, you know, dinner, and uh, you know, food. Uh, and so by using the comma, it's not going to be a problem. Now, I have illustrated over here line numbers on my, um, on my code. Now, that doesn't come by default on Jupyter. You have to go here and then uh, show line numbers. And you can see I'm showing them. But then if I, uh, if I do that and disable them, we have no line numbers here. With a dictionary, you might not uh, simply want to query the key and get the value. You know, we could go you know, breakfast and then get back the value but we might want to get all of the keys, or all of the values, or all of them together. And so here they are. Uh, the first is keys. So we could have the name of our dictionary and go dot keys, uh, dot values, and dot items. You'll also notice that at the end we have these parentheses here. Uh, now that's important because what keys is, is in fact it's a method for a dictionary. It's not an attribute of the dictionary, uh, and that difference will become a little more um, salient when you look at more complex data structures that will have both attributes and these sorts of methods. But the important thing here is that if you leave that out, it will, it will not return the keys. It will return some instance that will say keys of dictionary. But what you really want is the, those keys as values. So let's watch this down here. I have another food-related dictionary. Uh, when we have fish, and I said the fish is going to be what the type is going to be salmon, and then a mushroom, and the type is going to be enoki. Now you'll notice I also add a new element down here. I'll say by indexing fruit, as in make fruit the key, then give it the value of apple. Okay, so the first thing, just by printing ex.dict uh, right there, 
and then down below you'll see what happens when we print uh, each of the different keys and values. So first if I print type keys, it'll say class dict keys, but then if I print the actual keys themselves, uh, then it prints this right here. So you'll see that these are different types. They're different uh, types of objects that have been returned, and yet they all work kind of like the things that we'd expect. They all work like a list. So I will um, I'll elaborate that on that a little bit down here. Let's do that again one at a time. So uh, if we have uh, keys equal ex1 uh, uh, ex1 dict, uh, I'll just say that dot keys. Not going to return anything, but the key value is there. So if we go print keys, it'll give us the keys, and it's called dict keys. Uh, now, if we did this instead, it'll say built-in method of keys of dict objects. So like I said, it's a method. And what we want to do is we want to run that method. Uh, sometimes we'd say we want to execute that method. Uh, and so what here is the method takes no parameters. Um, we can use the help just like below. A set like object providing a view on the dictionary's keys. And print as so. You'll also notice that dict keys itself uh, wasn't a list, but that's not a problem. We can turn it into a list simply by going uh, list uh, keys, and then, then we have it as uh, a list. And it works pretty similar to a list uh, either way, but sometimes you might want to explicitly do that. Now I want to call out, uh, values works the same way, but I want to call out items right here. I suppose I should give it a better name. I'll call it the uh, the items, and it's just like what we have above. And if we print the items, oops, if we print the items, we have a dict items, and it should say up here a list like object or a set like object. There we go, a set like object. And if we print the uh, the items, we get this dict items, and it looks kind of like a list, but inside are little tuples. And that's because we wouldn't want to modify or edit them. They really are the values uh, that represent the dictionary. So uh, what we can do if we print uh, items uh, zero, you'll notice that says dict items is not subscriptable. We can't index the items because it's a set like object and it doesn't have a position. But if we wanted to create that, we can do this once again, list Now we have a list of these items, and that list, we can then get the first item within that list. And so items returns key and value pairs. But in order to index them, we have to turn it into a list from this set-like object that it's in. And so that's demonstrated down here. We're pretty much near the end of this uh, section, but before we get to the conclusion, just some gotchas on a, uh, on a dictionary. Now you'll notice here we have a, a dictionary with just one item in it. It says fish and salmon. Now what if we wanted to uh, add cod? Maybe we now have um, some sort of uh, storage device and we're storing fish and we want to make sure that we're storing both salmon and cod. Well, if we do this, now we get fish cod. So how would we, how would we do this? We, you know, we can't establish it this way. So there's one approach down below. We can make it a list. And so then when we append fish, what we're, or sorry, append cod, we're appending it to this list. Notice the syntax here. Food dict fish effectively exists as the list with salmon in it. They really, it represents that thing. So doing this is the same as taking this list down here dot append cod, and then making this right here the list that we have for fish. So we can see that working here down below, and now we have fish and then two items in the uh, list, rather than one item clobbering the other one, meaning kind of making no space for it and then uh, taking up its place. 
uh, which is what we what we don't want, or we might, or we didn't want in this circumstance. Of course, sometimes you might want that. Maybe you only have one kind of fish on the menu, uh, and so you would replace yesterday's fish with today's catch. Uh, but that would be depending on the use case. The important thing is that you're able now to manage uh, collections within collections. Feel free to play around with these and make sure that you can add things both to a dictionary and to any collections that are the values of the dictionary. And here we are at the conclusion, a bit of a short chapter here, but I hope it's of useful to you. Uh, we focused on three main types of collections, list, set, and dict. Uh, but then we also actually ended up showing a number of other collections along the way, including a tuple, uh, dict items, dict values, and dict keys. So, but these other collections tend to work in pretty similar ways as the previous one. Uh, so that's why if we have a collection, we, we need a way to access data from that collection. Uh, and I chose list, set, and dictionary because they show the, uh, the basic different ways in which we access things from a collection by position, by inclusion, and then by key value pair. In the next chapter, we're gonna make use of collections through iteration. And we'll be able to do something for each element in a collection or only under certain conditions. Um, now this right here is a question mark. It says the exercises in the appendix enable some practice with dictionaries and particularly some objects that are a mess of list, nested lists and dictionaries. So to remind, uh, that appendix, uh, you won't see it here in the, uh, in the chapters. But if you go up and look in the exercises, you can see Appendix 1. And by this point, you should be able to practice some stuff. Now, we don't have uh, much to say for Chapter 1. Uh, you know, is it running Jupyter Lab? And we don't have a whole lot for Chapter 2, which I, sh I showed before. But now by the time we get to Chapter 3, uh, we're able to start thinking about some interesting ways of making, uh, making use of collections. And it really warms up when we get to the next chapter, which is on iteration. And you can see that next. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.